Today is going to be different. It's time for another collab. If you haven't already noticed, I'm pretty partial to a rhinestone or two, and I was lucky enough to be invited to this collaboration all about sparkle and glamour. The idea was to create a trio of burlesque themed bombshell girls, each with a different hair colour, and each with their own unique costume, covered in rhinestones. This is pretty far out of my comfort zone, as I usually only make fantasy or fairy tale inspired characters. But burlesque shows are a kind of fantasy, so I just tried to look at it like that. Definitely make sure you check out the other two videos that make up this collab. Blank Space Dolls has made an amazing platinum blonde stunner, and Kira's Workshop has created a fiery redhead. I ended up getting black hair, which immediately made me think of burlesque and drag legend Violet Chachki. I was inspired by one of her outfits in particular, but I'll talk more about that later on. For now, let's look at this amazing holiday Barbie that will be our victim today. I love her model muse pose with one elegantly bent knee and one hand on her hip. Obviously this doll doesn't have the same skin tone as Ms. Violet Chachki, but I wanted there to be diversity in the trio of girls in our collab. Not to mention that this doll has a beautiful face sculpt, and her skin colour is stunningly rich and will look so amazing with the colour scheme I have planned for her. After prepping her head as usual, I start working on her face up. I usually never start immediately in with black pencil, but this time I was happy to take the risk. This was my first time repainting a Barbie doll, and it did take a bit of getting used to, considering how much smaller the face is compared to a Monster High or Ever After High doll. I also do something else very unusual for me, which is starting her eyebrows immediately with pencil, rather than chalk pastel on a small brush. Given that the Barbie face is much smaller, and I wanted to give her quite thin brows, this method seemed to make more sense, and I'm glad I did it for this project. But I'll definitely be happy to return to my comfort zone with a monster high face up again very soon. I wanted to give her some colourful makeup, and decided to go with a blue and purple eyeshadow look that blends into a bright pink blush that's draped from her temples to her cheeks. I do this using my pan pastels, which are super pigmented, and I love working with them. I also add a little cream coloured pan pastel to highlight her brow bone. In order to give her a bright and opaque red lip, I go in with some acrylic paint and a tiny brush. I usually do all my paintwork at the end, but I give her this lip a little earlier in the process so I can make sure all the colours and proportions work well together. I was really excited to give this doll a new hairdo. My plan was to give her a super slick ponytail, and to stay true to this African-American Barbie's original look. I start drawing in some baby hairs. I really enjoyed this process and I think it adds a lot to the finished hairdo. To add some depth and dimension to the face, I contour her cheek and jawbone with a dark brown pastel, and I also add some black pastel to the outside of her eyes. I decided to not really give this doll any eyelashes, which I know might be a little controversial, um, I hope it doesn't disappoint anyone too much, but I felt like the dark smoky eye was enough without adding anything else over the top. 
I also felt like she was kind of serving androgynous kind of Grace Jones energy, which I absolutely adore. Normally I add glitter and highlights as one of the final steps of the face up, but I didn't want it to sit on top of her black eyebrows or black baby heads, so I do this step before I go in with my black paint. I use a combination of pink and rose gold Perlex powders, as well as a little dusting of makeup highlighter to give a chunkier, glittery look. With that step done, I can go in and really define the baby hairs and individual eyebrow hairs with black acrylic paint. I also give her a little beauty mark because why not? I mix up a light brown colour to paint a little half circle highlight in the eyes. I also add some catch lights on the opposite side. Given how small Barbie eyes are, I didn't want to smash in too many details, and I'm really happy with this more graphic look that I finished with. I pop a little highlight on her bottom lip, and the face up is all done. Now, onto the body and the outfit. I mentioned earlier that this look is heavily inspired by Violet Chachki, so I knew I had to modify this doll's waist in order to give her that corseted look. I went back and rewatched a bunch of Hextian's videos. Um, I'm sure you all know exactly who he is, an absolute icon and legend in the doll community, but just in case you don't, I'll leave a link to his channel in my video description below. In particular, I watched his two Violet Chachki videos, as well as two of his Marvel inspired dolls, his Monica Rambeau and his Scarlet Witch. From these videos, I learnt how to change my doll's waist size by cutting out a section, creating an armature out of wire and hot glue, and then filling in the gaps and creating a new waist with air dry clay. Hex uses epoxy sculpt, but I had Millipipe open, so that's what I went with. I also decided to sculpt her entire outfit onto her body, so I used some warbler thermoplastic to create a base for the bottom of the corset where it goes over her hips. This means I don't have to sculpt directly over the joints, letting me keep the movement and articulation there. Thank you. 
I superglue her pumps onto her feet and use more Millie putt to blend them together to create the illusion of boot. They're going to be thigh highs, so I add some Millie putt mid thigh to imitate the tops of the boots. I add the same effect to her arms as well to imitate the tops of her gloves. This is very similar to the way Hextian dresses his Marvel girls, so full credit to him for this clever technique. Once the clay has fully cured, I sand it down to create a smooth surface to work on. I want to create a gradient with a few different colours of rhinestones, so I paint the doll with a base of pink and then sketch out the pattern I want. I then lay down a second coat of paint, but this time with five different colours, creating a guide for me when I start adding the rhinestones. Spraying Mr. Super Clear Sealant over rhinestones would definitely mattify them and dull their sparkle, so I have to do my body blushing at this point. I use a dark brown pastel to add shadows around the edges of her clothes, as well as contouring on her decolletage. I also add some fuchsia blush and lots and lots of highlight powder to match her face. The colour palette for my doll was inspired by this Violet Tchotchke look. It contains a specific type of discontinued Swarovski crystal called Volcano. Even though this Swarovski crystal is discontinued, I managed to get my hands on a very very similar rhinestone called Purple Flame, which is basically a knockoff of the volcano colouring. They have this amazing shift from blue to purple to pink to yellow, depending on how the light hits it. I also bought some Orange Flame crystals, which have a pink to orange to yellow shift. To create a gradient between these two flame coloured crystals, I have some orange, pink and dark cyan AB rhinestones. To help keep them all organised, I put them in this ice cube tray. And then I begin the very, very long process of rhinestoning this entire doll. In the group chat for this collab, we kind of joked about making it a competition to see who could use the most stones, so I actually started counting them one by one. I used 812 stones on the corset alone, but at some point during the boots I lost track. 
I ended up completely finishing two of the 1440 piece packets I had purchased and got pretty close to finishing the other three packets I had. So by doing some mathematical guessing, I'm going to say I used about 4,000 rhinestones on this doll. I knew that covering her fingers in rhinestones would end up looking a bit too chunky, kind of like bedazzled oven mitts. So I fully rhinestone about half of her arms and then create a gradient scattering effect to blend the painted hands into the rest of the glove. To break up all the rhinestones and introduce another texture into the doll, I decide to make her a fur stole. I go with this super bright and obnoxious yellow colour. I really feel like it gives the look a very modern, fashion-y twist. To help with the posability of the garment, I use a flexible fabric glue to add wire down the length of the fur fabric. I also glue in a little loop which will let the stole drape off the doll's wrist. With the glue all dry, I can start sewing the two sides together. I use a ladder stitch which will result in a nice clean finish, pulling all of the raw edges onto the inside. I pull some hair fibres from black acrylic yarn using my usual method and also straighten them with my hair straightener. I use PVA glue to make wefts and start adding them around the perimeter of her hairline. To attach the wefts, I use a very fast drying glue which lets me check the hair pretty quickly to make sure I've created a nice hairline. I repeat the process on the other side of her face and then continue to fill in the rest of the hairline until it's all done. With all the hair glued on, I decide this is the best time to reattach the head to the body. If I waited until after I styled the hair, I would definitely mess it up when I try to wiggle it back onto the neck peg. To add length and volume to the ponytail, I add glue and roll up a left over weft to create an extension. Mm -hmm. 
I glue it to her head where I want the ponytail to be, and once it's fully dried, I use a piece of thread to help me gather the rest of the hair around it. For security, I add an elastic, and then cover the elastic with some more yarn fibre, adding a drop of glue to lock the final style in place. And with that she's all done! Please like this video to support my art, and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Also leave something in the comments below, I really love hearing what you all have to say. Without further ado, I present my first ever Barbie repaint. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to like the video and to follow me on Instagram at MrSuperCustoms. See you next time, have an awesome day.